We got ourselves an incredible matchup today in the summer circuit. We got ourselves Kreiner versus Weens. If you've been subbed to the channel, you know I covered a game between them last year in the previous circuits, and they are back head to head this time. And I felt like it would be fun to cover this game again, but in a little bit of a different light. These are nine inning games, like was covered last time. But the difference between that now, we are in the summer circuit of MLB 22. The gameplay is different a little bit from last year. You're gonna see some changes with how people play. You're likely to see Randy Johnson, who's going to be a factor in these games. But it's going to be very exciting to see how these two adapt. I'm going to really try to study these top players and try to pick up on what they're doing so well. And try to use that as valuable information for us who are trying to get better at the game. And try to get some good value and tips out of it. So let's hop on in and see how this game goes between Kreiner and Weens, two of the best hitters in the game. All right, so we are at the start of this game. Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns bump day here. Very, very interesting start. He's going to Corbin Burns. A lot of people have used and faced Randy Johnson. He's going to the live series Corbin Burns with that sinker cutter mix. Um, Let's go. <laughs> obviously, since he's a live series card, sometimes he gets that hits per nine boost because of inside edge. I don't know what he's looking like today, but all I know, Corbin Burns, a popular pitcher choice, not the expected choice. It's guys like Dallas Keuchel and Randy Johnson existing. I'm interested to see who Weens has on the bump. But that is going to be one out. One thing I want to point out and note off the rip before we are even a full inning in the game. These two are such good hitters. Like, it's second nature to them. Their PCI placement, the way they mentally prepare for fastballs. That's something you hear me say a lot in this video. A lot of preparation for fastballs. A lot Whoa. of really good PCI placement. It's going to actually be, like, really fun to watch. These dudes might put up a real high-scoring game here out in Coors. And by the way, they are at Coors Field instead of in oh years past. You'd be seeing Chippet Stadium all the time during these. Now you're going to see interesting stadiums. And here we are at Coors with that max elevation or very high elevation. But now you got the bigger dimensions in comparison to what Chippet Stadium used to be with that higher elevation. Oh, we tried a little hit-and-run action. Apparently, he picked that what up and happened? tagged the runner. <laughs> Apparently, he picked that up and tagged the runner, but that didn't really show there. I have okay. no idea what just happened. Confusion. Big confusion. Hopefully, they're at the, the right type of stadium. Sometimes, but... Oh, go. Frank Thomas! Not the best swing, but I waited Oppo on it. Taco against Corbin Burns. So, Kreiner is another really good hitter, but you are facing Randy Johnson, which is definitely a, a big difference. In comparison to facing Corbin Burns. Randy Johnson has the, the fastballs. He has the outlier with the four seam. So he's going to throw harder than Corbin Burns. Oh but the, the really tough pitches the are the slider and the slurve. When you change speed with the slider and slurve, then Randy becomes nasty. Yep, getting Because those on. two pitches look the same. But early they also on. don't have the same speed. I wanted that so. to way more inside, though. What I'm interested in is how Ween's pitches with Randy Johnson against Kreiner because dudes like this are really good at hitting the fastballs and that outlier fastball isn't going to be a problem. I think you just kind of got to keep him on his toes, mix in the splitters, throw those sliders and splitters, I mean, slurves off the plate. You see, he he's wanting fastball. Let's see, can he sit back in the away two seam here? Good take. That was in the zone. By the way, you see that? A four ERA with Randy Johnson. Is that a product of Weens playing so many good players that can hit him? Or is he just not able to pitch with Randy not well? Have Holiday. I don't know. I will say, just from the demeanor of Weens, he seems very Hopefully chill right now. He's got his mic on on his stream. I don't think he so he seems very chill and lax right now. Oh, Yelich. Christian Yelich! Christian Yelich! Let's go. Turns on an inside cutter. So that is two home runs for Weens on cutters over the heart of the plate. Seems like Kreiner is trying to sit back on that two seam, trying to no, adjust no, his no, timing. No, 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 no. And then he kind of hung a par. splitter. That's the one That's thing with Randy. Yeah, you definitely cannot hang that splitter. You throw that over the heart of the plate, it gets absolutely smacked, especially against dudes who are sitting fastball, because then they'll get that earlier swing on it and be able to pull that a lot of times. Kreiner seems like he's trying to adjust and sit back on the ball a bit here. So he's he's a little bit later on some of these swings. He's trying to make that adjustment, but he's going to have to be dialed up for a fastball. Yep. Inside four seam in mount. Can he time it up? Oh, he just absolutely spit on it. He's going back to the slider. 
Two good takes for Kreiner. He's going to work a good at bat here. He's ready for his fastball. He's going to be waiting for it. Sometimes it's the best pitch in the game. And uh, I don't think he expected it. He, def he actually did not expect the fastball there. I, I guess Randy Johnson is crying around a funk here. Like, like I mentioned, those sliders and slurves are what makes him tough because they both have the same type of movement but are different speeds. And he is just absolutely dotting up poor Kreiner uh, I mean, right now. Zone, oh, Lord. I mean, I think Kreiner's going to heat up, but it's going to probably start from him hitting one of those early count fastballs or finally being able to sit back and adjust on the Randy Johnson slider to slurve. Good swing. Ooh, there's a good swing. Another away fastball hit for uh for weens here that's the thing with corbin burns like if you can get the timing down these dudes are going to be able to crush him because you know he, he doesn't have insane break in those fastballs they're essentially similar speed too between the sinker and cutter just a couple mile per hour different so i, I think guys like weens and crying are good enough to to hit that that pitch speed right now it's actually seemed like a little bit of a low scoring game weens needs to make sure he is patient Tries to cash on that runner on second. All he needs is a single to the outfield. Two inside fastballs in the corner, by the way, to start off the at bat. Is he going to stay inside the Frank? No, oh, no, he no, is. No. Got him on the circle change. So now you, you know he's sitting dead red fastball. Do you double down on the breaking ball or do you go fastball again? He went fastball again. Not even in the zone. That's not really a good waste pitch. If this is me, I'm throwing a cutter just outside of strike zone right here. The the off the plate sinker is also a good choice. When you're playing the dudes that are really sitting fastball, the reason why Corbin Burns could be a good option is because he has multiple fastballs with the left right movement. So you can go to that sinker a good bit off the plate here, get some weak contact. Super dive. And then you could go to the cutter on the opposite side of the plate right here. And these dudes that are always ready for fastball can expand that strike zone a bit. And now that you got Randy Johnson on the mound. That oh, that one hung. Even though that is a pitcher, you definitely don't want to do that. You never know what happens here. Good old cores. That two seam is big for Randy as well because it looks like a four seam out of the hands, basically. But comes in a little bit slower, which oh, someone like Kreiner is trying to time up the outlier. And... It's very tough to slow down to the two seam, which is about like five miles per hour slower. So you get a lot of early swings with that. There we go. Good pitch. Wow. A good splitter. I'm not going to lie. I did not expect the pitch off between Kreiner and Ween so far through three innings. There have been three runs scored in the first two innings, and that has been it. But also, I, th I think this comes to show that right now, at this current state in the game, Someone like Randy Johnson is so good. Even against these dudes that are absolute goons, Randy Johnson is tough to hit. He's not easy oh, for no even for even Kreiner, who is a, a top hitter in the world. Normally, Kreiner is someone that is a fastball junkie, as I like to jokingly call it. But he's oh, always that someone that old. seems to mentally be sitting inside four seam. Um, especially against someone like Randy Johnson, though. It seems like he has him thrown off a bit. Jeez, that's actually a real good swing. For him. That's an unfortunate out, but that's a real good swing on a two seam. Um, it seems like he sat back on that well enough to hit that the opposite field. Um, but honestly, just didn't get that PCI to elevate enough from the looks of it. And the thing that's so interesting that I want to talk about, that's a, another solid swing. I think Kreiner's Are close. Bailed, but Kreiner's very close. He, he, he just needs one or two swings to connect his way. And you know Weens is going to stick with Randy. So, Kreiner just needs that one rally. Those swings need to start connecting a little bit harder. Um, but back to what I was saying. The thing that's really interesting about this is how this has been a pitcher game. If you watch my video up here that I did last year in MLB The Show 20, 21. All you guys on the stream won't be able to see that right now. I covered them in the, uh, the circuit last year. And their game was incredible. Every game felt like a high scoring game. They were both all over the ball. And I, I, I think Randy Johnson especially is proving to really be a, a thorn in Kreiner's side. Weens is putting some solid swings up, but now as the game has gone on, he's starting to kind of 
get some quick outs here and expanding that strike zone a bit. Which is so interesting. I mean, it could have been from just playing a bunch of games yesterday. The dudes are off their element. You know, Weens being late on an inside cutter doesn't even seem normal to me. Let's keep an eye on this pitch mix to Roberto Clemente, by the way. Inside slider ends up right up here. He's going to go to the two seam. Try to catch Kreiner a little earlier. And that he does. That two seam is so risky because if he does sit back on it, he crushes it. But he's just early on it. That shows he's sitting four seam. Again, another two seam. He goes two two seams in a row. Catches Kreiner a little bit earlier on it because he's mentally trying to time up the outlier. Now he's going to go to the two seam again. Three times in a row. There we go. He's going to get the out there. He threw three two seams in a row and Kreiner was very early on all three of them. Because we're not going to hold him scoreless forever. See, we didn't just mention it. He just said he has to hit because he's not going to hold him scoreless forever. Damn straight. <laughs> the, what I'm noticing with Weens is he's swinging at the fastballs outside of strike zone, like that cutter, the sinker. These pitches just outside of strike zone here. Frank. That would call oh plate though. God. Frank Thomas. It's in oh. high and deep to left. And that one's going to go. He finally got that fastball in the zone. I really wish I squared that up. Early side of good. Honestly, that's not a bad swing. Yeah, he got the lower, I mean, the very top of the PCI, but he got the timing on that inside sinker. And here at Coors, you elevate it. It's going to carry, so. That is what happens with 99 Frank Thomas. Me, and uh, a big insurance run for Weens. He that. mentioned how he needs a score because you're not going to keep Kreiner shut out. Five, Seems like his judgment of strike zone isn't 100% there right now. And Kreiner's definitely taking advantage of it. Yelly, I'm on oh, that, that ball's crushed. There we go. Sinker over the heart of the plate. Is it going to carry? It does. It seems like as of right now, until Kreiner sits back on a two seam and actually times it up inside, Randy Johnson is going to continue to be a thorn in his side. It's going to continue to be a problem. Like, I can kind of tell it's become a frustrating thing for him. Because really, Weens is throwing two seams down and in over here, getting Kreiner early over and over again. And look, look at that timing. He's consistently early. Don't you dare hang. Now he's going to throw a splitter. Again, Jesus. gets Kreiner that early. I that. He's just throwing splitters and two seams down and into righties. And Kreiner can't sit back and time it. And honestly, when, you, when you're pitching to someone like that, you got to keep on throwing it until they adjust. And like that, that kind of looks like he may have adjusted. <laughs> He caught himself a down and then slider. That was an easy read for Kreiner. Again, he's trying to play in that lower in corner to righties. Except this slider, it starts off here and just kind of floats in. So that's a little bit of an easier read than in comparison a two seam that starts off here and kind of just you think could go inside. It comes. That's the, the difference between those two pitches there. The, the path the Got ball him. goes into the zone. Got him. Oh, yeah, and now, just like that, Kreiner has two straight on, hits. Bro. It seems like uh, Weens, he went to the, the outlier four seam there, and Kreiner, he tied up the four seam. Ozzy's probably going to keep on throwing two seams. Throw. There's that two seam very early on the two seam. Red okay. alert. <laughs> That's a big strikeout. Big strikeout for Weens. But again, he's got to keep on using that two seam to his advantage. That two seam and splitter. Oh, oh he tied up a splitter. Uh oh. It's getting saucy. It really seems like uh, Kreiner is trying to play that sinker cutter mix. A little bloop action from Frank Thomas, by the way. He's really trying to play the, the sinker cutter mix. The sinker is just off the plate here. The cutter is just off the plate here. Try to get non-barreled up contact. Um, this problem is with no start catching the plate. Okay. And Ween starts making the adjustments, then uh, they can become problematic, like that one there. Again, what's Kreiner looking for? Inside fastball. You see how he's early on that. That was a good take from him. If I'm Weens, I'm going to throw a down and in splitter just below the zone right here. Try to get him early on it. He's going to go try to go to that cutter, but that cutter was too close to the plate. He's not going to foul that off. You got to throw the low splitter. Oh, he's going to split her in the Die. zone. And he absolutely froze him. That's actually a good tunnel right there. That's a great tunnel from Weens. 
But the reason that tunnel was such a good one there for Weens, because the cutter, I mean, the cutter comes from the hand here, goes here, and then he went splitter, which comes from the hand here, and it kind of stops right here. So he played on that previous pitch cutter and got Kreiner to, to take a pitch right on the black. And honestly, Kreiner seems to really be struggling with these these multi-fastball pitchers with the, the cutter, four seam. Um, I retract my statement. I retract my statement. I don't think he's struggling anymore. Right now, he's missing a couple spots. You gonna give him a fastball? Uh oh, no. Wow. Wow. Ween said, you know what? I'm gonna challenge you on the inside no, fastball I know you I want. And Kreiner Ozzy pieced it up a bit, but he probably just missed it. Three outs left for Ween's against a really good player in Kreiner. He's gonna go to Corbin Burns, a guy that looks like Ochev apparently in his game, out of the bullpen. So I have a feeling Kreiner is gonna at least put some pressure on Ween's here. First pitch. Away cutter that definitely caught too much plate that Kreiner probably wanted to swing at. Second pitch. Going back to the cutter and see Kreiner's early on it. He's all in that outlier timing. He's going to throw an inside cutter again. Kreiner's going to spit on that one. Now you're going to go down and in slider. Try to get him to think it's that cutter, but he absolutely spits on that. Please roll it over. There's that good old away splitter trying to get him to expand that strike zone. And Kreiner does a good job of fighting it off. Kreiner is sitting inside fastball. He is looking for a fastball on that inner half of the plate to turn and burn on. He's looking for something right here. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. See, see how early he is on that? He's looking for that pitch. He wants it. Now he's going to go down away. Oh, wow. Is that going to oh go foul? God. Oh, that's oh so God. unfortunate. That is so unfortunate. He was all over oh that. He got that fastball God. over the heart of the plate, right in the barrel of the bat with that sinker. That was not where that went. That went right here. Okay. There it is. A good old leadoff runner is already on. Again, we're going to split the plate in half. Look, for the, look at Kreiner's swings on this left side half of the plate. That inner half. That's kind of how these dudes go about it. They're mentally sitting, ready to time up that inner half, and then they mentally slow down on the away half. That's why he's late on the away pitches and early on the inside that pitches. so bad. Oh my God. That, that right there near the par. is that's an incredibly lucky. So an out pitch? Yeah, it seems like a good idea. Incredibly lucky out for Weens there. A slider right down the middle but sometimes the sl the pitch right down the middle is the best pitch to throw against these dudes it's very weird and it's gonna get him an out a big out now you got jim edmonds up who is definitely not the best batter ever but he already has a late game double here that's a good pitch choice i love the low splitter you go to the low i mean the low sinker You're going to the low sinker is a fun pitch choice for these dudes because they're so dialed up on fastball, you might be able to expand that zone, get a, a ground ball here. However, Kreiner absolutely spits on it. Uh-oh, down in sinker. He absolutely turned on it. I'm telling you, if you could just sit back a smidgen on that inner half and keep one of those swings fair, he's no doubt hitting a home run. He's just a tad early all game on that inside pitch. Uh-oh, ground ball. Is he going to turn it? He does! Weens induces an inning-ending double play. Make sure if you are watching this on YouTube, swing by the Twitch channel today. We're going to be covering the rest of this tournament, breaking down, analyzing games as we're going. So if you want to watch this live, come swing by the Twitch. Come join us in the party over here, and uh, I'll see you all again on the next one. Deuces.